Argonaut has a new gravel bike, the GR3. I just spent three days here in Bend, Oregon, riding this bike around in the woods with company founder Ben Farver and some friends. I got to tour the facility where they hand make these bikes using a proprietary 3D printed silicone mandrel process. I want to tell you about this bike, what's unique about it, how it rides, how it compares to others, uh, and show you what I learned and got to see on the factory tour. For starters, the geometry is fairly unique in the gravel world. Often now we're seeing a divergence in how gravel bikes are presented on one end you've got the fast gravel the race bikes where it's usually a, a steeper front end uh, a lower front end and a tighter wheelbase for a more racy road-like feel while still being you know stabler than a road bike and then on the other end you've got the you know adventure gravel bikes the rowdy gravel bikes which are slacker and typically you know taller on the front end and a little bit you know longer in the wheelbase for a more overall stable ride what Ben Farver is doing with the GR3 is taking elements of both, putting them together. So you've got a low front end, you know, stack compared to something like the BMC Caius or the Specialized Crux, you know, straight ahead, fast gravel race. However, the front is slacked out. This is a 68.5 head tube angle. So you've got this, the stability of something more like a, you know, in the direction of a mountain bike or an adventure gravel bike. That is mixed with a, a low BB, Again, we're seeing that sort of across the board on gravel, but the back end is very much fast gravel and the, probably the shortest chain stays I have seen at 415. That's, that's road race bike territory. That's done with a, a unique style. Drop chain stays are, are nothing new, but there's a slight very new variation here with how Ben puts this together in that the seat stays come in like almost underneath the BB. So instead of a, a curved stay, they're straight stays, but they're coming in low. So lots of unique stuff going on here I want to tell you about it but first help me out hit that subscribe button and let's make this channel work so some quick background on argonaut ben farver started making steel bikes in oregon in 2007 later moved to carbon using a local facility and in recent years built a brand new facility to bring everything in-house. The RM3, the road model, which came out last year, was the first new bike out of this new facility. And now the GR3 is the second. Farver employs 18 people in Bend, where they do everything from cutting out the pieces of unidirectional carbon, 3D printing the silicone mandrels, molding the carbon around said mandrels in small pieces, uh, then mitering those tubes together to make a small junction, putting the whole thing together, gluing and curing the frames one by one, and then doing a lot of detailed work, finishing, sanding, and painting. There are basically three places in America doing this at scale. Argonaut and Bend, Alchemy in Golden, Colorado, and Allied in Rogers, Arkansas. Why do they all start with an A? I don't know. There are certainly some smaller builders or companies doing, you know, much smaller runs of custom things, such as, you know, Envy's got a custom road made in Utah. Uh, Parley's been doing custom carbon for a while, but as far as like stock handmade carbon bikes, it's just those three in the U.S. I will do a separate video on the Argonaut process because if I put that in here, this video would be 30 minutes long. So I'm going to do that as a, a separate video later and we'll link to that here in this video. I've also toured Allied and I'm touring Alchemy, so I'll be doing videos on those companies as well. So how does this thing ride? To put it bluntly, unlike anything I've ever ridden before, the mix of racy and adventure is a funky cocktail. For racy, there's the short rear end and low stack, and on the adventure side of things, there's the slack front end. Also, 50 millimeters of tire clearance. So let's break down how all that happens and how it all works together. The low stack gives you a more road-like position. The 56 bike I rode, for instance, had a 57.1 centimeter stack, which is like the uh, BMC Caius. This is lower than Cervelo Aspero or the Specialized Crux or the Giant Revolt. Is lower a good thing? Of course, that depends on your preference. I like a lower position because it just feels good. And it's also good for riding in groups. You can just get low and get arrow, right? The short rear end helps the bike accelerate 
well. And normally it makes cornering feel more nimble, but when you mix that in with the slack front end, it gets a little bit muddled. So the reach is more traditional. The 56 bike I rode had an effective top tube of exactly 56. That's you know pretty straight ahead and shorter than most so-called progressive gravel bikes. Standing up on the bike, the front end feels heavy. I mean, it's not like a mountain bike, it's not floppy, but it's leaning in that direction. Now, once you're into the choppy trails, which we rode a lot of in Bend, the handling starts to come into its own. Now, Ben said he wanted to build a bike that feels great for where he lives and rides. Ben has a slew of trails just outside of town. We spent a few hours over a few days on those trails and the bike was easy to maneuver, winding around the trees. There was also a huge amount of what Barry Wicks was calling moon dust, some super fine sand that was pretty deep in parts. It would cover rocks, but not smooth over these lumpy monsters underneath. The logging roads were just loaded with the stuff. And yeah, there having a slack end, you know, helped keep things plowing steadily ahead when you couldn't see what you were going through. Ben also talked about the benefits of a slack in for racing, not just adventure riding, but when you're trying to go quick. You know, if you're in a selection in a gravel race, a lot of times, you know, things will kind of link up and you'll get with a group on the climb. And then when you crest over and then you start descending, that's a lot of times when people will get gapped off or have it, or get a flat or some kind of mechanical and then lose the group and then kind of the race is over for the day. So that descent, that T clearance is important, being able to run plenty of big enough tire that you can descend aggressively without flatting. Um, and then also the front end handling and the lower bottom bracket, a really slack front end for that stability to go downhill really, really fast, as fast as you can, really, to not have the bike be a limiting factor. Now, he's not wrong. Slack is more stable when going downhill on rough stuff. That's why mountain bike design is what it is. The question as always, is just what you want to optimize for. Most gravel bikes are in the 70 to 72 range for the head to angle. The BMC Urs, the unrestricted, is on the slacker end at 70. The Salsa Warbird, an OG gravel race bike, is just under 71 degrees. And then at 72 degrees, you've got a whole slew of bikes. Trek Checkpoint, Specialized Crux, Cervelo Aspero, BMC Caius, Canyon Grail, and the new giant revolt. Now, it's not that the majority is always right. That's just for reference. And again, the Argonaut GR3 comes in at 68.5. Beyond riding the trails in and around Bend, we also rode a lot of Jeep road. And there, having confidence on the downhills was a positive thing for me. You know, hitting a lot of areas where there's dappled shadows, and you can't tell, is that a giant pothole or is that just a shadow from the tree? When you're coming in, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour, having confidence in your front end is a positive thing. Again, Ben's not wrong. More stable means more stable <laughs> on downhills. On flats, though, that 68.5 head tube felt more stubborn. You know, especially on the roads, whether they were paved or just smoother dirt. When you get up out of the saddle, the bike just felt a little more plodding. Now, could you measure a decrease in speed as related to like the same power output? No, probably not. That's just like a sensation, not a, you know, direct decrease in speed, but just, the, you know, the slower handling is slower handling. And then that low front end felt good on the flats riding in groups, you know, with the flat forearms on the hoods or getting down on the drops. Felt like a good, fast gravel bike. Just one with a slack front end. Let me throw some other numbers at you. The chain stays super tight at 415 and the chain stay, chain ring clearance even tighter at one mil. I had no issue with the ring touching the stay even as a heavier rider out of the saddle banging around on rough roads over days but just visually it's awful tight back there conversely the tire clearance massive you know 50 millimeter tires again in that super short chain stay so that's a a funky mix of things in this gr3 for geometry you can get custom and then stock Ben says, don't say stuck. He likes to use the term proven as in tried and true geometry. 
I guess the word stuck to him infers that there's a ton of bikes just hanging on the racks and you're just pulling them off. He wants to emphasize, no, we're making these things by hand, but you can get stock, you can get custom, and Argonaut's making about 200 bikes in total a year out of their facilities in Bend. Of course, the bike comes with the T47 bottom bracket, which Argonaut designed a few years back in conjunction with Chris King. That is a oversized BB shell that is also threaded. So you get the best of both worlds in terms of no squeaking, knock on wood, uh, due to poor tolerances in a press fit, but still having uh, a wide BB shell that can take all your favorite types of spindles. For weight, a 56 centimeter frame comes in at a claim to 910 grams with a 400 gram fork. Argonaut's also making its own stem, uh, which has a you know, pretty unique design with a single top bolt. Pricing, turns out it is not cheap to manufacture carbon bikes in the US. Frame set $6,500 and complete bikes of course go on up from there. The one I was riding had a Campanile Eckhart 13 speed group, uh, zip 303 wheels, that is pegged at approximately $12,000. For reference, you know, an allied frame set will set you back $4,200 for an able gravel bike. An Alchemy Ronin is $4,500 or so. Both of those companies will sell you a complete bike SRAM Red in the $10,000-ish range. You can get a variety of builds. I'll tell you just briefly about the build I rode. Campanello Ekar, I love and do not love, depending on which portion of the group we're talking about. The braking, I think, is wonderful. Best in class for gravel. The shifting is annoying to me just because of the thumb placement causes you to rotate your hand a bit wherever your hands are on the bike. The range is excellent. You've got small steps because you've got 13 gears. You can only get it in one bike. You can only get it mechanical. The Zip 303 wheels, pretty straightforward racing carbon aero numbers. The Rene Hurst Hurricane Ridge tires we rode were flat monsters. We must have had a dozen flats between five editors and a few staff members over the course of a few days. And then just getting the things to hold air was a chore. So yes, they're supple and they feel great and they've got big uh, grippy knobs, but durable, they were not. So on the last day, uh, Argonaut swapped out some Schwalbe G1 RS tires for the editors who had zero flats. One bike still had the Rene Hurst tires and that had multiple flats and the guy ended up having to hitch a ride home. So all that to say, Rene Hurst isn't my favorite tire. If you're hell bent on getting those, I would recommend you going with the Endurance casing, which has just got a bit more durability to it. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on gravel groups, which are Campanile Ekar, Shimano GRX, and SRAM Axis Explorer, I've got a separate video for that to check out. For gravel tires, I will be doing a top five video on that shortly. The Argonaut GR3s are available now, but there is a long lead time, approximately four months on complete bikes. So if you want one, get your order in now. Stay tuned for a video on the Argonaut fabrication process, how these folks are building bikes up in Bend, Oregon. In the meantime, I'm Ben Delaney, and I thank you for watching.